in my room, anyone? Oh, wonderful idea. Oh, I never told you, Mara. I got a letter from Matthew, and um, they're the people who publish our songbook, which is on sale in the foyer at 9.99. A snip. Yes. Um, anyway, they've written to say that they're auctioning the film rights of my book, and it isn't even on the shelves yet. Wow, that's wonderful news. I didn't know you'd written a book. Oh, yeah, she was hard at it all autumn. Oh. <laughs> what sort of a book? Uh, well, it's a novel. Um, oh, there's no great literary merit or anything like that. It was a blockbusterish sort of thing. It's entitled Bonk. <laughs> it's the epic saga of French banking. <laughs> Well, now listen, I've had a few good ideas for a novel too. Perhaps we could all write it together while we're on tour. We could write it while we're bowling along in Dilly's van. You know, you could get one of those thingies so you can run the laptop off the cigarette lighter. I suppose it's one way of passing the time between Hammersmith and Worthing. <laughs> Mind you, because we'd have to decide what kind of novel first. And we'd have to do a lot of research. But that's your stock in trade. You're absolutely marvellous at research, Marilyn. No time like the present. Let's write an old-fashioned romance The kind they sell on railway stations Fat paperbacks where doe-eyed maidens Arouse the hero's nobler sensations Let the reader get to grips With the riding crops and curling lips The bursting stays and the flimsy plackets The thigh-high boots and the velvet jackets Dame Barbara Cartland does the rest for when she writes the word period, it refers to the past. <laughs> to write a good book, an historical costume drama, begin with a beautiful orphan whose guardian's a feckless charmer. While exploring his house, she finds herself behind a secret panel, then discovers his mistress smuggling Wellington's plans across the channel. Ha ha! She's kidnapped and nearly ravished by a couple of pockmarked swells, but escapes disguised as a stable boy of the Bishop of Bath and Wells. But beneath her galley gaskin, strapped to one of her shapely legs, is a map of where Marie Antoinette buried her Fabergé eggs. Her guardian admits the passionate love he previously tried to bury. She surrenders herself to his masterful kiss and finally loses her cherry. Yes! Let's write a tough modern romance The kind with golden printed titles Fat paperbacks where raunchy misses Grab their readers by the vitals Oh, make it raw and nearly real Like Judith Krantz or Daniel Steele Try injecting the possess That Barbara Taylor Bradford has <laughs> You'll never find that your sails are flagging If like Jackie Collins there's lots of shagging <laughs> To write a good book, a really steamy novel Begin with a Hollywood starlet who was born and raised in a hovel She's determined to win the lead in the remake of Rebecca But the producer dies of a heart attack while she's lunching on his pecker <laughs> She seduces a delivery boy who's a novel's only virgin Then she has her buttocks tightened and marries her plastic surgeon Her career is going nowhere, she can't afford to be choosy She comes home to find the delivery boy and her husband in the jacuzzi No! Her house burns down, her yacht blows up The network cans her chat show Oh, what a shame Then she marries her trainer and strikes it rich by bottling her own gazpacho. Eat your heart out, Paul Newman. <laughs> Let's write a nice, cosy romance, the kind by Miss Joanna Trollope. Fat paperbacks of Middle England, set in Middlesex or Middle Wallop, where vicars' wives get moister <laughs> in the classroom or the cathedral cloister. Where well, women learn to be assertive And there's lots of nobbing But it's always furtive <laughs> Oh, and doing it with twins Is a path well worn by Mary Wesley In the chamomile yawn To 
write a good book, a gripping aga saga. Begin with a middle-aged woman whose mother is going gaga. She catches a bus to the library because her books are overdue. Then she goes to the park to feed the ducks and think her marriage through. She picks a flower from the floral clock, though she knows it's a venial sin. And then overcome with guilt and remorse, she tries to stick it back in. But then she goes back home to make marmalade, according to Delia Smith. It's a complicated recipe involving both flesh and pith. <laughs> So the gardener comes into the kitchen to help her chop the rind. <laughs> and it suddenly gets exciting when he rogers her from behind. <laughs> Though with the likes of Dostoevsky, we'll surely never rank. Stuff art will be laughing all the way to the bank.